you very much for, for coming. And today, this is my first time in this meeting, and I've been I've been learning a lot. So, uh, so yeah, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to share some of our uh, data, some of the work that we are doing. Uh, so, I'll be talking today about uh, this project. It also, it's also a United Soybean Board uh, funded project, uh, and um, tackling mainly uh, foliar diseases uh, of soybean. So, I really want to give you a taste of what, of what we're doing and what our objectives are. Also, it's a, it's a several states, uh, 11 uh, different investigators are involved in this, in this work. Uh, 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 seven states are involved in, the, uh, in this work uh, and several universities. So this is a, last, a list of our objectives. I'm not going to go through the objectives one by one. Uh, but the idea is that th there's a combination of basic work, try to understand what are we dealing with, how do these organisms cause disease, are, do we have some changes in the populations of these organisms that are causing some of the diseases? Uh, targeting a few diseases as, as models, right, to kind of work on and hoping to develop tools where we can learn from, from these particular diseases so we can kind of extrapolate and use that information with, with other organisms. Uh, we also, on our team, so we have some people who are doing basic work, we have uh, people who are doing more applied kind of field uh, applications coming up with, with management uh, uh, or, or, uh, 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 practices, developing uh, managing uh, management practices. Uh, we have some uh, a breathing effort too to kind of take what we've learned and try to ultimately uh, uh, develop some uh, resistance in, uh, uh, in soybean. And I'm just going to talk also about one of the objectives. We're not just working on, on fungal pathogens, but we also are uh, targeting a viral uh, a, a, a disease that's caused by a, a virus. So I'll, I'll talk about this uh, towards the end. So uh, two pathogens, two diseases uh, that we are targeting are diseases that are caused by, by this genus, the Caspera. Uh, it's from a leaf spot, and we are also targeting uh, uh, Caspera leaf fly. Uh, on, uh, on soybean. So looking, so both of them are caused by Cercospora, right? So it's like the same genus, but there are lots of differences between these these two diseases in terms of the, the these pathogens, the nature of these pathogens, and how these diseases develop. Uh, so looking at uh, frog leaf spot, so it's caused by by this pathogen, Cercospora sojina. And in this system, we kind of we know that there, that there is some variability in the, in, the, in the population of the pathogen. So we call them races. There are different races uh, in this pathogen, meaning that different types of resistance in the plant, different types of uh, different races will interact differently. So sometimes you can have disease, sometimes you do not have disease depending on what race you have. Uh, and, and the kind of the basis of the resistance, we know some, some loci that are involved uh, compared to this other organism here, uh, we know way more about this particular pathosystem. Okay? Uh, so with the Cercospora leaf blight, uh, we do not have a defined uh, race structure. We don't think that there is a race structure. And we do not really understand a lot about the resistance. Right? How does that, that resistance uh, uh, take, take place? And of course, to be able to start thinking about resistance, you need to give that informa information about the pathogen to the breeder so that they, they can develop that resistance, they know to, what to look for. So the first step is to kind of confirm what organism we have, know what our enemy, what, 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 the, what the pathogen is. Now historically, uh, one pathogen called Cercospora kikuchii in 1925, is was, it was identified as the pathogen that is responsible for uh, uh, both uh, uh, Cercospora leaf blight uh, and purple seed uh, stain in, in soil. So that was the dogma, right? So since 1925, we're thinking that this is the organism Kikuchii. This is this is what we're dealing with, and that's what Kikuchii looks like on artificial medium uh, in a lab. Okay, but there were some reports from other places uh, in the world that maybe there's there are these two other organisms that may cause that same disease. So one. Uh, the, the first objective, one of the main objectives uh, in our research was to kind of go and look at, uh, 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 get samples all across the United States, or at least soybean growing areas in the United States, and see what is causing both PSS and CLB in the US. Okay? 
So that was an extensive effort, 2017, 2018. We also have some, some samples that are being collected, that were collected in, in, in 2019. Uh, so more than 700 circospora isolates from 11 soybean producing states. And most of this work was done in the University of Arkansas, Bert, Bert Bloom's lab. Uh, the take home message is that different tools were used to kind of identify, see what is the organism, what's causing that, that problem in the United States, both PSS and CLB. We could not find any uh, Kikuchiya, no Kikuchiya. So that organism is not there, right? So that dogma that this is the pathogen, we discovered that that's not, that's not the case. And of course, once again, this is the first step towards coming up with management practices, coming up with resistance, trying to develop resistance uh, against this particular pathogen. So that was a big discovery. So the question is, has the Casper Kikuchiai vanished in the United States? So more sampling? We looked more and more. There were two hypotheses. One hypothesis is that we're not looking hard enough. Maybe it's hiding somewhere. We just did not see it, but it's still there. The other hypothesis is that things are happening with these populations of these organisms. These, orga these organisms are changing all the time. So we do think we have we did a lot of work, and we do think that's what happened really is that that organism really get assimilated, right? So it kind of, there was some hybridization, it, was, it, it kind of evolved, uh, it interacted with another uh, Cercaspora, and we ended up having this organism kind of disappearing. We cannot find it in the United States anymore, okay? Uh, another objective is to kind of look at uh, the, the pathogen that causes from that spot, that's Cercaspora uh, uh, sojina. And this series of slides uh, is provided, was provided to me by Carl Bradley, University of Kentucky, and he's also part of this, uh, of this, uh, of this project. So here I just wanna, so this is from uh, 209, uh, just showing the, the spread or the incidence, right? We call it incidence, how severe frog leaf spot uh, uh, is becoming or how it has been developing the past few years. So here we're looking at places or states where that 1% loss heat threshold is uh, kind of overcome, okay? So that's, uh, so 09, uh, we have uh, in Tennessee, 5% loss, expect, and then Florida, 2012, so you have more incidents, 2015, significantly more uh, incidents, where once again you have losses, that estimated losses that are going above uh, 1%. 2018, even more spread. So, the, so, so, the, so we believe at this point is that frog leaf spot, uh, that, that free, it's, it's, it's occurring frequently enough in new areas, causing more and more disease, uh, that it's becoming more and more of an established kind of threat to uh, soybean, producing, so, soybean production in states where previously, in places, locations where previously it was not really that, that big of a, uh, of a problem. It was less of a problem. So you have the spread, but also another problem is basically uh, resistance. So as part of this project, what we try to do is to follow resistance uh, to certain fungicides. In this case, I'm showing you a tracking of resistance against this class, okay, of fungicides, these turbulence, uh, and then we can see, so that's from uh, uh, surveys went on for several years, this is covering 19 states, 265 counties or parishes, and you can see that there is an extensive kind of spread of this resistance uh, in this population of the fungus that causes frog eye leaf spot against uh, this, at least this family of, uh, of fungus, okay? So you, is, this is something kind of, again, kind of similar to what we see with uh, development of resistance in, in herbicides. So it, it's, a, it's a big problem. Uh, and, uh, and then once again, one, 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 uh, ob one of our objectives is to kind of uh, track the development of this resistance. Uh, some decks, what we did, we also developed some tools to not only track and uh, understand how this resistance developed and have some molecular tools where very quickly we can uh, given samples, we can tell whether uh, these samples are going to be resistant or, uh, or uh, susceptible to the, uh, to the fungicide. 
So this is with uh, Cercospera sojana for Galif spot. But also we're doing, once again, we, we're using, developing these tools and we're using these pathosystems as models uh, to understand what's happening, something that we can apply with other uh, organisms and disease. And this is the same thing with the same family of fungicides uh, and then tracking uh, 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 the uh, brown spots, Aptoria glycinus, uh, the, the organism that causes uh, brown, stout, uh, brown spot, and we also do see uh, the development of resistance uh, against those fungicides or that family of fungicides uh, in, uh, in that particular pathogen. Uh, part of this project also, uh, we do have uh, a uniform uh, fungicide trial for FLS. Uh, for fragile leaf spot, and it's coordinated by uh, Carl Bradley, uh, University of Kentucky, uh, Kentucky, and we have six states. We have uh, uh, plots, or we have uh, 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 th th these screens take place every year uh, across uh, several states, trying different types of, uh, you know, like uh, timing of application and, and, and different types of chemistries. So another objective is to uh, come up with resistance, and uh, we do have a uh, soybean breeder working with us. And in this case, I told you with frog and leaf spot, basically we have some understanding of uh, the, the interaction between the pathogen and between uh, the plant. Uh, there are several sources of resistance that have been identified in soybean. Most of the uh, varieties that are resistant uh, and that are nowadays in market, they basically have one type of resistance. So, so part of this project, what we're trying to do is to kind of try to introduce the other types of resistance in some soybean, uh, and, and kind of uh, trying to, um, in case we have some resistance in the, in the pathogen uh, developing, or tolerance in the pathogen developing against the resistances that are already available in the market, uh, that we can have some other varieties or that have some soybean with, with the different types of genetics that can overcome these changes in these uh, populations. Once again, those fungi are just changing all the time, okay? Okay, and the, now we, I'm going to talk a tiny bit about a viral disease. So we work on, and this work is done at the University of Illinois. Uh, so it's Glenn Hartwood's group, uh, who also is associated with the USDA. Uh, so in this case, uh, we are uh, working, he's working on the soybean vein necrosis virus. And this is a virus that was first described in Arkansas, not very far from here, uh, in 08. We know that this virus uh, is transmitted by a, by a thrip. Uh, and then we also know uh, there are uh, several reports that it can uh, uh, cause economic losses that affect the uh, the yield uh, and it, uh, affect, it does affect also the composition uh, of, uh, of seeds. So what they tried to do is to basically look at, they screened, one thing that they did is that they screened uh, a, a huge collection, USDA collection, germplasm collection that they have, PIs, uh, to look to see if they can find some resistance or tolerance in that population, those PIs. Uh, against uh, the, that, that particular thrip. So uh, once again, that, this is a virus. It's transmitted by this thrip. So if you can find some type of tolerance to this thrip, then the virus is not transmitted. That's one way of dealing with the, with the problem. Uh, so they did screen. Um, and then they were able to kind of identify, in this case here, what you see. Uh, so there are certain uh, PRs, there are certain lines. Uh, that are way less, uh, 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 they attract the, the thrips way less, right? So you have some type of a tolerance um, uh, in, in the germplasm, in, in, in that collection, the huge collection that they, they screen, and so they were able to identify some resistance or some tolerance uh, to that particular thrip. And, uh, and once again, this is uh, one way to deal with this, uh, with this virus. You know, no transmission, no thrips, so you're gonna have less of a problem. And finally, so we have a couple of extension people on our uh, uh, team. Uh, so all this data, usually it is kind of disseminated, uh, different values, and one of them is the crop protection network, uh, which is really a very nice resource to have, so you can access it, lots of information. Here's uh, some information about frog ID spot and recommendations, uh, and uh, say password. Okay, with that.
done. So thank you very much. And questions? Yeah, yeah, back to the pythium and copper. Um, you said there's, you know, there's a bajillion species, mm -hmm. different temperature ranges. Is there a trend? Uh, that's a great question. So um, one of the things that, the, uh, that was found across many states is that uh, you would not just have one in the field. Uh, usually you would have four or five dominant species in the field. Um, and they might cycle over time, but they typically, you're going to, in some years, you might deal with one of those species a little bit more than the other, and it's, um, it, it would be temperature related. But yeah, there are some uh, parts of the country that tip would have some sp um, species that you don't have at the same frequency, maybe in the Mid-South, and, and vice versa. But as far as like cool or warm temperatures? Yeah, for the most part, they, yeah, the for the most part, most of those species are a little bit more cool and damp, but there are some uh, some species, not a ton of them, but a percentage of them that like the warmer conditions. Okay. But I mean, I, I think that's one of the things that companies have determined over years that the so and so can do a really good pythium test, but we don't get good results out of that part of it. And is it is it the investigator? Is it the is it the location they're using? And so that's kind of as you start filling in the gaps, you're like ah, oh, that's why as we've started to see that there are some uh, seed treatments that work very well. Um, but then when you challenge them with a certain temperature, it's not like the fungus is, becomes resistant to the, uh, it's just uh, when, the, when the fungus is at its optimal temperature range, the, the, uh, the fungicide just isn't as impactful to it, you know. And so the companies have started to be able to use some of that information even in their deployment of, of those seed treatments. So, yeah, great question. Any other?